Hey everyone, Art Shadow here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. So previously, we had the infamous argument between Yuri and Natsuki, and now we're gonna see if I actually managed to stay on the Natsuki route, because I don't know. Just a few days ago, I never would have thought that I look forward to an extracurricular so much. But here I am, back for another club meeting, and anticipating new antics from everybody. Oh, those wacky shenanigans. The usual scene awaits me as I step into the club room. You know, Monica and Sayuri are talking. Natsuki and Yuri are battle sword dueling to the death. You know, nothing new. Hi, Daniel. Hey, Sayori. At least it wasn't Yo, Sayori. Because I felt that was very, very weird in the original game and just. Why would you ever say, Yo, Sayori? That was like Gino saying, Yo, Smithy. Just to sound like... Anyways. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just not used to you being in the club, that's all. Is that so? Well, it's nice to see you so cheery. Anyway, what's new? Oh, I've got some exciting news! Like what? I just saved money on my car insurance by switching to GEICO! Okay, no. Pfft. It's been a while since I've made one of those jokes. Okay. So then, let's see. What is your exciting news? Eh? What's up? Did you know? Did you know gaming? That the student store sells that brand new... Er... That the student store sells that new brand of strawberry milk now? I saw when I passed by on my way there, on my way here. Ah, uh, I should have known better than to expect actual news from Sayori. It's like, what were you expecting her to save money on her car insurance by switching to Geico? Huh? I don't think I've tried that yet. I don't know. Strawberry milk is usually too sweet for me. Well, Sayori is sweeter than candy. Okay, I don't know. I guess I've only tried strawberry milk a handful of times. But my love belongs to chocolate milk. What? But it goes great with melon bread. Sayori, you could eat a packet of raw sugar and you'd still say it's not sweet enough. Hey, that's an exaggeration. I'll have you know that I've only eaten half a packet of raw sugar and said it's not sweet enough. Seriously, though, it goes really well with bread. The milk is sweet, but it has that unique tart strawberry flavor that's eased by the richness of the milk. I don't even remember how strawberry milk tastes. Just barely. That's how long it's been. But I don't remember hating it, it's just... I like strawberry... Er, eh, I like chocolate milk a lot more. Or regular milk. And when you pair that with fresh bread, the sweetness is spread out even more so that it has just the right amount of flavor. So it's just right. Wow, when did you become Gordon Ramsay? Well, she's not Gordon Ramsay yet. She hasn't slammed two pieces of bread over your face and asked you, What are you? And forced you to say, I'm an idiot sandwich. Or Norian scum. Haha, <laughs> I'm a food expert, so you can trust me on this. Or, I'm a food expert, so you can trust me on this. I mean, given how many snacks you eat every day, I don't doubt that you know your food well. She's a food connoisseur. I'm gonna take that as a compliment, you meanie. I'm a meanie for giving her a compliment? Well, it sounded like a backhanded compliment. Or... Okay, well, maybe a little bit backhanded, but I guess it could have been meaner. Anyway, aren't you hungry now? Talking about food always makes me hungry. So I need food. Now that you mention it, maybe a little. Great! Let's go to the student store and buy snacks together then. Ah, uh, now I see what she's playing at. So this is basically the... 
what was it, the cookie? The cookie incident from the original game? I raise an eyebrow and Sayori notices. So grumpy. Um, Daniel, why are you looking at me like that? Well, Sayori, I have a nagging suspicion that... You're only trying to convince me to come because you don't have any money. I ain't got no money. And you want me to buy you a snack. What? I would never do that. It's like, I'm looking at a snack right here, okay, no. <laughs> oh, really? Then let's see your purse. Huh? Your purse. Let's see it. Uh, um... Sayori laughs awkwardly as she pulls out her purse. She opens it and dumps its contents onto the desk. Two small coins fall out. And a button, and a paper clip, and a little piece of string. Tisk tisk tisk. Uh uh uh. You didn't say the magic word. This little ruse might have actually worked had Sayori not pulled it on me numerous times when we were younger. It's like I know your tricks. I wasn't born yesterday. The amount of time she managed to trick me to buying her another ice cream. I guess some things never change. Nice try, Sayori. No fair. How did you know? Because this is the 97th time you've tried to pull this on me. <laughs> now, wouldn't you like to know? Let's just call it intuition. In response, she sticks out her tongue at me. Mm. Typical. And this is one moment where I guess having a face cam would help. But it's like, yeah, I don't. <laughs> Eerie suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice she was eavesdropping. Let's take this conversation somewhere outside, Patrick. It seems like some people are eavesdropping. Well, how rude of some people. Looking over in her direction, I catch her peeking over the top of a book. Ah! It wasn't me, I swear. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. It's like, oh, that Gilligan. Yuri? Tell Daniel to let me borrow some money. That's... That's none of my business, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can r responsibly afford. It's shameful to manipulate people into buying, doing or buying things for you. Wow, isn't that a little harsh? I'm only messing around with Sayori, after all. Ah, did I just... I didn't mean that, I swear! That came out a lot harsher than I intended. Sorry, I just... well... Uh. <laughs> Yuri blushes in embarrassment, looking away from us while playing with a strand of her hair. I apologize for how I've been acting lately. I know, it's like you've really been large and in charge around here. Making sure you don't take nonsense from anybody. It looks like she still might be ashamed of how she acted yesterday. <laughs> you know, it's okay to be honest sometimes. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. You shouldn't always keep things that bother you to yourself. Yeah, I speak from experience when I say don't ever do that. It'll just hurt you more and more inside. That's... There's no way you could think that after... You were right, though. I shouldn't trick people into buying me things. What? Oh my god, Sayori has realized the error of her way. There's no retribution for her. Funny how your ten-year-old self didn't see it that way. Yuri lets out a small laugh, covering her mouth with her hand. Even the way she laughs is so shy and proper. <laughs> well, at least she's not like all. <laughs> well, would that be? No, well, that's the Ojo Sama laugh. I don't know. Maybe Yuri could be an Ojo Sama. Ah, uh, is this mischievous? <laughs> is this mischievous behavior something Yuri used to display as a child? Then. Oh yeah. Although back then, I fell for it, time and time again. 
You wouldn't believe how much candy Sayuri managed to con me out of. Ah! Don't make me out to be so sneaky, Daniel! Although those candies were so good. I'm surprised, Sayori. Coming from you, I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> What's going on here? What's going on in here? Just got a gun! Okay, no. No one's got a gun. Oh, nothing much. Sayori was just up to some mischief. Mischief managed. Or not managed in this case. Oh? Yeah, she tried to trick me into buying her a snack. Even though I told her that I'm looking at a snack right in front of me. Hey! That's not true! Really? I guess you're... Okay, whatever. Monica smiles wryly and turns to me. I'm assuming this isn't the first time. Nope, this is the 97th time. Well, you'd be right. We all share a little chuckle at that. Well, everyone except Sayori does. She's too busy being grumpy. Hey! You guys are being really mean! Okay, okay, we're sorry. But you did bring this upon yourself. You turned them against me?! You have done that yourself! You will not take them from me! Your anger and your lust for candy have already done that. Don't lecture me, Daniel. I see through the lies of the Jedi. Okay, <laughs> this is a new one. I've never turned her into Anakin. <laughs> I've turned her into Padme. Or, nah, I've turned her into a Padme, but not Anakin. Yeah, I know. Consider this your retribution. But in my defense, I am really hungry. Well... Natsuki chimes in. Where'd you come from? If you're really that hungry, you can have this if you want. Hold this. She offers up a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori immediately snatches it out of her hands. Mine! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Okay, yeah, so in the original game, didn't it like smack her in the face or something? Sayori hugs the cookie. She will love it, and cuddle it, and call it George. And I will hug you, and pet you, and squeeze you, and... Whatever. <laughs> Jeez, just eat it. Or shall we let you and the cookie have your privacy? Sire rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Such ravenous behavior. So good! Sire <sighs> suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! Or, I bit my tongue! Ha! You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? That's a nice cookie you have there. Can I have it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Chocolate? Did you say chocolate? Yes, sir! With or without nuts. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Why, what's the one that you gave her? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sorry gets out of her seat, goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Surprise hug attack! Ah, jeez! It's like, Natsuki doesn't like it when you do that to her. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Oh! Oh! What's with that face? Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Uh, hey! Did you seriously just do that? Yes. <laughs> My cakes will burn! Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Now you'll never get her. Yuri, Monica, and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Okay, Iris. Monica, can you tell Sayori to stop quicking- <laughs> To stop quicking my stuff? Monica, can you tell Sayori to quit taking my stuff? Sayori, 
You know you shouldn't do something like that without permission. Monica scolds Sayori. I know, I know. I'm sorry, Natsuki. But it was so good. So I've heard. Hey! Everyone but Natsuki chuckles. These things happen a lot, Monica? A little bit too much, to be honest. <laughs> a little too be honest, to be H. Don't worry, it's all in good fun. Good fun is teasing each other from time to time, not stealing food. Oh, calm down. It's no big deal. Here, I'll buy you another one. Humph. There's the grumpy humph. Grumpy humph. Now Suki pouts in her seat. So grumpy. Everyone calms down and quickly returns to their normal activities. So, battle sword duel to the death. Sayori has already managed to finish the entire cookie. Meanwhile, Natsuki go gets up and heads for the closet, and Yuri is already lost in her book. Okay, so I'm already I'm still on Natsuki's route. Good. So, you ready? Huh? Oh right. I wasn't expecting Natsuki to start reading so quickly. Not that I wasn't looking forward to it. Well, let's get going. All right, I'll follow you. Now we're going up to the closet. Okay. Natsuki excitedly walks over to the closet as I trail behind. You're gonna like this volume, Daniel. All that overarching plot you've been wanting, finally. Monica! What? Something wrong? I glance, I glance inside the closet and immediately notice the problem. All of Natsuki's boxes are sitting on the top shelf. Just out of her reach. Did you move all my stuff again? Did you steal my face? <laughs> Sorry about that. Er, about that. The teacher got mad because of how much room your stuff was taking up and moved it around. So then you didn't move it. So Natsuki, Monica's safe. I was gonna try and put it back, but I didn't have enough time this morning. Sorry. Ugh, that's just great. Natsuki attempts to reach the top shelf with little success. Well, don't just stand there. She moves some of the school supplies on the lower shelves to make room. There, that's plenty of room. I'm moving these back down. I notice a collapsible stool hanging on the side of the closet wall. Here, use this. Or here, use this. I take the stool off the wall and hand it to Natsuki, who quickly props it up and hops on. The stool is just barely high enough to allow Natsuki to retrieve one of her boxes. She uses her fingertips to inch the box towards the edge of the shelf. Once she gets a good grip, she quickly hops off the stool. See? Easy! Okay, and it went a lot better than it did for her in the original universe. Natsuki holds the box up triumphantly before placing on one or er, before placing it on one of the lower shelves. Do you want me to get the rest of them? I can handle it myself. I just need something taller. Taller than me? Natsuki pokes her head out of the closet and scans the room. All the chairs are attached er, pfft, all the chairs are attached to the desks so it'd be impossible to get them in the closet. Aha! Okay, nope. Never mind. It's probably going to end the same way for her. She heads for the teacher's desk and retrieves the computer chair sitting behind it. I watch as, he, as she wheels it in to the closet and proudly hops on. It's like, yeah, I remember this. I told you I didn't need your help. I'm perfectly capable of doing this on my own. What? Since the computer chair is on its wheels, it swivels from side to side as Natsuki stands on it. Rocking from side to side. Oh god, I don't even really like that song very much. <laughs> S steady, steady. Natsuki clearly doesn't want any help, so I just idle in the doorway of the closet and watch. Now I'm looking inside the closet. She shakily grabs boxes and places them on the lower shelves. 
Ah, here it is! Natsuki pulls the Parfait Girls box set off the shelf. She then opens the box and digs around in it with one and... Huh? She then opens and digs the box around in it with one hand and while holding the box with the other hand. What? Suddenly the chair starts to give out under Natsuki's feet. Ah! I rush over to Natsuki, placing my hands on the back of the chair and propping my foot under one of the wheels. Luckily, I managed to stay to the chair and prevent Natsuki from falling off. The manga, on the other hand... Ah! The box! And we died. Okay, no. I feel... Or, I feel book showered down on my head and my back. The hardcover's leaving a painful bruise. Natsuki quickly jumps off the chair. Okay, well, it ended better for her, but not for me. God, look what you did, idiot! What I did? You made me drop all... Ah, you made me drop the books everywhere! You would have fallen off the chair if I didn't save you. I would have been fine. Natsuki turns back to the closet as if reflecting on the events that just occurred. When she turns back, she lowers her head. Okay, maybe you did help me from falling. So, uh, thanks. You're welcome. Now we should probably clean this mess up. We both get on our knees and begin cleaning up the spilled manga novels. Manga novels seems a little bit redundant. I don't know. Luckily, none of them got damaged in the fall. There are only around 15 or so books, so we manage, or we finish fairly quickly. Once everything is back in the box, Natsuki puts the box back on the shelf, but not before I snack the second volume. Still want to read? I hold the book up. The expression Natsuki makes is priceless, but I can't help but smile. Parfait Girls Complete Collection, $150. Computer chair, $75. The expression Natsuki makes when you ask her if you want to read with her. Priceless. Money can't buy you everything, but for everything else, there's MasterCard. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I've just, I've always wanted to try and make fun of the those old commercials. <laughs> All in all, I'm pretty satisfied with this manga. Natsuki was right. It gets really good in the second volume. I was right, wasn't I? Yep, that was pretty good. Told you so. Okay, everyone. Time to share poems again. I sigh. Guess we'll read some more later. You sound like you're excited. I am. You am? I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> it's like, I bet you're excited to see this cover again, aren't you? I am. <laughs> Damn it, why'd I ask you that? I give Natsuki a wave before heading back to my seat and grabbing my poem. See you later, reading buddy. And by later, I mean right now. Why are you so grumpy and cute and pouty? Natsuki reads my poem. Like, are you in love with me yet? By now, she had to have read it at least twice. Uh... Uh, is everything alright? Huh? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Um... Natsuki looks down at my poem. It's... good. Okay, really good. Really? Because I was afraid that I was going to make it... A Sayori poem, but that's good to know. There, I said it! Then what's the problem? I hate it! That's the poem, I hate being right! This wasn't how it was supposed to go. I was supposed to be the pro. You were supposed to write like me! Instead, you just... Natsuki's voice trails off. Natsuki, I do write like you. Huh? 
My style is heavily influenced by yours. Did you not notice that before? No, not really, since... Like I said, it's just 20 random words that don't make any sense. Um... Natsuki rereads my poem once more. Her face compl <laughs> Her face turns completely red as she reads, and once she finishes, she looks it down at the floor. Natsuki, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. Not only is your poetry really good, but you also fight against the trend of normal poetry, and you fight hard. I reject your reality and substitute my own. That alone is pretty impressive. Don't sell yourself short. You are the pro. It's like, there are those who think little of you, but pretty soon you'll find that those haters are in short supply. Okay, no. I'm just trying to live up to your skill level. I'm trying to live up to your expectations. Which... I don't know if I'll ever measure up to your expectations. Natsuki takes another takes a moment to digest what I just said. Not the part about the short supply or those who think little of you, right? R really? Really? Really, really? Man, it's like How many times did I just reference Shrek? Uh, the thanks. No problem. Now let's see your poem. Yeah, sure. I don't get it. I don't get why people will hate on good rhymes. They act like it's dumb and a waste of their time. I don't diss their free verse or deep subject types. Be dark all you want. Just keep in your gripes. Oh sure, you can tell me if you have a problem. Just keep it constructive and things will be awesome. I'd like to know that our readers will differ. Or I'd like you to know that our readers will differ. There is no best style, you smug old glue sniffer. Who are you calling a cl uh, who are you calling a cootie queen? You glue sniffer. Uh, that's another old commercial. My poems may be really simple and often straightforward, but charm can be found in such a whimsy and order. In such whimsy and order. Not all poems can be as complex as you'd like. If you think otherwise, you can go take a hike. What about kids or the elderly too? Some read for fun. I guess unlike you. Let us just go and enjoy what is written. You won't like it at all. That much is a given. But give things a chance. You might find something nice. Just open your mind, and that will suffice. Damn, girl. So, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it's well written at least. Are you dense? It's like, this is like the ultimate diss track of poetry ever. I'm not sure how I should confront Natsuki about this. Okay, well, I guess there is that. But to say that she still holds a grudge from yesterday would be an understatement. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's literally a diss track. Or, I guess a diss poem. God forbid Yuri see this poem. Well, she probably is going to eventually. Heh. <laughs> well, that's a given. Because, I mean, we are sharing poems, right? But yeah, you could say that I was inspired. It felt really good to pound out these lines. Poetry is an amazing emotional outlet, you know? Uh-huh. Anyway, I can't wait to show Yuri this poem. Oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah, you're gonna be the real instigator of this fight, aren't you? Wait, hold on. What? Natsuki, do you really think that showing her this poem is a good idea? You're really going at her throat with this. Don't you think that you should work out your issues with her? Yeah, well, she never tries to see things my way. Yeah, going back to how she was, like, all calling her narrow-minded and and saying how she never sees anything like anyone else's way. I don't know. So why should I? 
so why should I? I think that's the wrong way to go about this. Relationships, relationships are a two-way street. Both people have to work to make things right. That's pretty much what my aunt said. Or, yeah, that's what my aunt used to say. It's like, it takes two. Everybody has to do their own work here to make a relationship work. Otherwise, it just... Well, she was speaking about, like, boyfriend-girlfriend relationships, but I mean... To an extent, that can be true for friendships as well. You both have to do your part to keep things going. And plus, it's like the song. You can't hurry, love. No, you just have to wait. Cause love don't come easy. It's a game of give and take. So yeah, it's a game of give and take. You have to give while you take, and vice versa. So does the other person. Why don't you try being the bigger person and just talk to her first? But I already know what she's going to... But I already know that she's not going to try. She's just always so preoccupied with looking complicated and smart. It's clear to me that she doesn't care if anyone can understand her. Including me. You can't underestimate... Er, you can't understand her if you don't even try. Yeah, you never know. She might surprise you. She might speak using more complex vocabulary, and she may have mannerisms that seem strange to you. But from what I've seen of the both of you, she's more similar to you than you might think. Uh, uh? That's... Aren't you judging a book by its cover right now? Ha! Huh. I just did the Uno reverse card on you. Uh. Well, whatever. You can't hold this grudge forever, you know. How about until I die? No. At least think of Monica and Sayori. Won't someone please think about the children? Fine. I won't show Yuri my poem. Then what will you show her? Are you happy? Don't answer that. Er, well, don't answer my question. I won't be happy until you try to talk to her. She's not going to bite Natsuki. Yeah, I'm not going to say. Ugh. Alright, I get it. I'll try to talk to her some... Or I'll try to talk to her sometime. Thanks. You're going to do the club proud. Shut it. But, you know... I'm glad that we share a similar writing style, at least. It's cool to talk to someone who... Well, gets me. I've been enjoying sharing with you. So consider yourself lucky. <laughs> Alright, I will. I'll be looking forward to tomorrow. Same here. Okay, now that that's out of the way. Um... I'm sorry if I've offended you. Huh? I said that Natsuki's writing style wasn't the best. Oh great, we're going with this again. But it seems that you prefer that style to mine. Is there a problem here? So in a way... I was saying that your writing style is bad as well. Oh. Oh, is this going to be the point where we make her all sad and she doesn't want to talk to us ever again? Y Yuri, that's a bit of a leap. I hope you can f forgive me. Yuri... It's okay for you to have an opinion that doesn't make you evil. Well, I'm not going to say anything there. I should have known this would happen. If I try to prepare my words, I just sound awkward and weird. But if I try to speak my mind, I come off as unfiltered and people dislike me anyway. You know, it's like... My younger self used to have a similar mentality which was part of the reason why I would hardly ever speak at all. Because it seemed like no matter what I said or did, people would still think that I was some kind of freak. Well, middle school and high school. Partly high school. Mostly middle school. So please, don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants. Monica wants me to not stay around you? But it's clear that 
You'd be happier if you spent more time around the others. Yuri, please. You don't have to pity me. It's okay. Besides, I have my books with me. Hello, darkness, my old friend. They'll never abandon me, or leave me alone. Yep. That's how I felt about my games, and my various Transformers and Bionicle stuff. The gang's all here. They're all I've ever needed, anyway. Yep. So this didn't really change much from the original timeline. Yuri shows me a plaintive smile before turning around and heading back to her own desk. I really didn't mean to upset her, but no matter what I say, she won't listen to me. She really seems to think I hate her, although that couldn't be further from the truth. I sighed at myself. All I can do is accept that that's how she is. If she actually wants to be alone, I'll have to respect that request and leave her be. Okay. Yep, that's all we can do here. Ooh! I really like this one, Daniel. Better than yesterday's, huh? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> that's not very helpful, you know. Sorry, sorry. I'm probably not the best person to get feedback from. Monica once told me that it's impossible to really read a poem because they're so subjective. So I just judge poems through my heart. I guess I look for how the poem makes me feel. I hope that helps. Um, sort of. I guess some feedback is better than no feedback, right? Right. Speaking of feedback, do you want to read my poem now? Sure. Bottles. Okay, well, it's the same title, but... Yeah, I think this is a different Bottles poem. I pop off my scalp, like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Like balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumbs and forefinger, and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes a friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a cave, discovering the secrets hiding, in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scrapping and scrapping, or scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. I don't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up, and in come my friends. They come in. They come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another. Hold them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let go, it shatters against the tile in my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay, I can see a little bit more foreshadowing in this one. So it's basically kind of like Sairi's trying to put on a happy face when she's not really feeling all that happy. And she's afraid to let down her friends if that so-called facade kind of breaks. Or at least that's one way I think of it. Wow, Sayori. I didn't expect this at all. Did you really write this? Of course I did. Remember, I said I'd write the best poem ever yesterday. Well, here it is. After all, Monica has taught me a lot. And, er, 
and I've been really in touch with my feelings lately. So that's what this poem's about. I suppose that much was obvious. Unlike Yuri's or Monica's poems, Sayori's are relatively simple to figure out. So, uh, if I've interpreted this correctly... You're basically doing everything you can to keep your friends happy. Okay, so I was kind of right. Yay! You got it! You got it! I really enjoyed writing this one. Just like getting your thoughts out into paper and turn th turning them into a poem. It's like magic! Just like a genie! Well, I think it's amazing. You should be really proud of it. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. That means a lot. I didn't think it was that good, though. Nah, it's great. Seriously. I can't help but notice that the latter half of the poem isn't quite as cheery. Yes, because there is more to Sayori than she's letting on. It's like, well, obviously he can't hear my thoughts, but it's like, yeah. This facade that she has, it's only a facade. That way you never know that inside she's crying inside and she feels lonely and depressed. But no matter how much she tries, she just can't break out of it. And she doesn't know how to look for help. Anyways. In fact, it's somewhat alarming, a very dark contrast from the cheeriness I'm used to with Sayori. Although, uh, maybe I'm looking into this a little too much, but the end of the poem is pretty... dark. And you've said you've been in touch with your feelings recently, so I'm just checking. Is everything okay? Nope. Of course, silly! Translation. No, save me. I need you. I forgot to tell you. I like to write a, I like writing about bittersweet stuff. Okay, she actually knows what bittersweet is here. Stuff that isn't just happy or just sad. A mixture of the two. And this poem shows what I mean. It's just my writing style. Uh, okay, that makes sense, I guess. Well, either way, I'm glad you're enjoying writing so much. I hope you keep it up. Good to have a hobby. Of course! And hopefully you, you'll also stick with it. So I look forward to seeing all the poems you write in the future. Well, no guarantees there. But just from seeing the passion in Sayori's eyes, it's hard to be pessimistic. Those beautiful blue eyes. Okay. Time for a little bit of Monica in my life. Hi again, Daniel. I'm trusting that the club's been doing you well? Same answer as yesterday. <laughs> That's nice to hear. So how's the writing going? Dreadful. Alright, I guess. Just alright? Hmm. No, I guess I should say that it's revolutionized my world and brought color into my previously lifeless... Uh, life. It's brought meaning to my previously empty life. Before you came into my life, it was all but a whisper to me. And now forevermore, I cannot think of the time I spend on this dreaded earth without you. So with that, I must say that I must have you. Okay, no. <laughs> Where that... I don't know, I think I... That was kind of from the Fresh Prince of Bell, or I just kind of improvised parts that I forgot. Well, if I say that, but the club, if not the poetry, really has made my days more interesting. Okay, okay. Can it with the sarcasm, mister? Whoa. Monica, what? No, I'm not... It's like, okay, I'm not being sarcastic this time, really. At least you're not hating it, though, right? Nah, it's been an interesting experience, at least. Seriously, Monica, I'm not being sarcastic. Gives me a new hobby to do. I'm happy that you're applying yourself, at least. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I gave my poem to Monica.
Wait, I gave my poem to Monica and yet she gives... Oh, we traded, I guess. Pressurized. I float there. In vast, hollow emptiness. Large but small. Grandiose and overwhelming. Yet, a dust mote. Drifting. Meandering. Carried along. In endless... Void. But then I realize. My eyes open. Bloodshot. My mouth opens. Gasping for breath. In this crushing, suppressing, restraining, boundless, everlasting, suffocating vacuum of torment. Atmosphere. Pascal. Tor. Screaming with no mouth. Stretching. Restraining. Unrelenting. Er, stretching. Restraining. Unrelenting. Clawing. With no nails. Disintegrating. In a suffocating poem of absence. Well, that escalated quickly. Monica, is there something you want to tell me? Uh, um... It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Yeah, except there's a much darker tone of this one. Really, you're freeform, too, if that's what you call it. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It just concerns me, is all. It's just the... It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. The other girls don't do this stuff nearly as much as you, at least. Hmm. Yeah, you could say... That they're a bit more traditional when it comes to their structure. But I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. So that much is apparent. Especially like that big, empty space there. Choosing... Where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. Just like a genie! Okay. Has Sayori been kind of getting into your head? Because it's almost like she said the exact same thing. Or was that Natsuki? Damn, I don't even remember now. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. It's fragment... it fragments everything... Or, it fragments everything and leaves a dissonant tone with the reader. I see. I guess there's a lot of things you can do with poetry. Definite, or definitely, poem is very much an art form. You're meant to craft poems using, using never before... Com, never before seen... Ah. You're meant to craft poems using never-before-seen combinations of words to interpret the world around you. You really love poetry, huh? Maybe you should write a poem about poetry someday. Poetryception. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Any er, anyway, it's still hard for me to tell what your poem's about. Well, I have a few ideas. Hmm, sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. What were you feeling when you wrote it? A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh boy, let me get my notes. There, now I'm ready. Are you ever too shy to s share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? Always. Now, we've all had to experience that at this point with the poetry discussions and all. But it can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. Yes. Partly why I gave up being a writer. If you find other people who enjoy writing though, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. Yeah, it is definitely helpful getting real criticism and feedback rather than just empty words. I guess I've really hit the mother load with the literature club. That's my advice for today. 
Sailor Moon says, Thanks for listening. Okay, I am back. I am ready. Okay, everyone! We're all done reading each other's poems, right? Actually, I never got to read yours. Nozaki and I haven't shared yet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can feel a storm coming on. Hell's coming, and I'm coming with it. Yuri hesitantly approaches Natsuki, who isn't meeting her eyes. Um, oops, I lost my poem! I guess you can't read it now. And considering Natsuki's poem for today, it's no wonder that she doesn't want to share with Yuri. Judging by Monica and Sayori's anxious expressions, they seem to be thinking along the same lines as I am. I can practically see Natsuki sweating pinballs. Meanwhile, Yuri appears to be blissfully unaware of the situation. I'd convince Natsuki t to reconcile with Yuri, but if she sees Natsuki's poem... Yeah. It's like, we're gonna go into, like, DEFCON 1 here. Well, it's all over. S so, Natsuki, if I may... Uh... How about we do this tomorrow instead? I'm not uh, feeling well. It's my time of the month. Uh, oh, um, okay. Well, uh, yeah, I, I don't. You can tell that as a guy, it makes me feel awkward thinking or even talking about that stuff. I can practically see Monica internally facepalming. You see this face? This is the face of someone internally facepalming. Meanwhile, Sayori's just... And Yuri's probably like, Huh? Natsuki must have forgotten that the club isn't all girls anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, is that so? I'm sorry, you must feel... You must feel absolutely terrible if you can't even share your poem today. You don't need to apologize. It's not your fault. You can... I can definitely share tomorrow. Ah. Uh, well, even if you aren't well enough to share your own poem, would you like to see mine? I, um... wrote it thinking of our argument the other day. I hope it's a good thought, not a bad one. I suppose that I wanted to show you that I'm, e that I'm more open-minded than I may have appeared. As a way of repenting. I know that it's not much, but hopefully this can contribute to a reconciliation between us. Although we may have our disagreements, I would like to consider you as a friend. And friends forgive each other. Uh, I'm sorry if that's presumptuous of me to say. No, it's not presumptuous of you to say that. Because I'd like to consider you a friend, too. So, so, so you can hand over that poem, then. With a shy smile, Yuri hands the sheet of paper in her hands over to Natsuki. So now I'm really interested to see what would have happened if I chose you. Yuri's route in this. Well, that'll be for the next go-around. As Natsuki reads the poem, her eyes widen. You... you're writing using rhyme and stuff. Like me? You could say that you convinced me to practice adding more lyricism to my poetry. Natsuki looks like she's speechless for once. Th thanks, Yuri. It's awesome. Aww. Everyone's happy now. There's no really er, there's really no need to thank me. Well, I'm just glad to know I'm just glad that I got to know you. It's like, well maybe you shouldn't judge people before you get to know them. I also got that lesson from Shrek. And I'll definitely have something that'll knock your socks off tomorrow. 
then I'll be looking forward to that. So then we'll just pretend that other poem never happened. I do hope that you feel t better tomorrow as well, so that you could share your work with me then. Uh, yeah, of course. Of course. That was a crisis and a half avoided. I'm really glad that Natsuki and Yuri worked things out, and it seems that Monica and Sayuri feel the same way. It's good to see everyone getting along. Now that we are done sharing, though, I have something to discuss with you all. Oh great, is it the festival time now? There's a great opportunity for expanding the club that's coming up. Is this about the festival? Yep. You could say that. What? Ugh, do we really have to do something? It's only in a few days, so it's not like we'll be able to come up with anything good. I yes, that's something I'm concerned about as well. With such little time left to prepare, I doubt we'll be able to put anything good enough to attract new mem- put- Ah, man. With such little time left to prepare, I doubt we'll be able to put together anything good enough to attract new members. Yeah, we'll end up embarrassing ourselves. It's like, oh, well, I'll embarrass myself whether or not we have something or not. Oh, don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Simple and clean. Nothing more than a few decorations. What? I can design some pamphlets to hand out at the event, and Sayori made posters to put up around the school. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Sorry, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to put on a poetry performance. A what? P -p 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 poker face. A, a Monica. Everyone's going to choose a poem. Choose one poem to recite out loud. It doesn't have to be written by you, as long as you put your heart into the recitation. 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 I don't even know. Although, of course, it'd be great if you could show off your own work. And the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite their poems, too. Yeah, so I put on the posters that said... Ah. Yeah, I put a thing on the posters that says, Bring your own poems. Instead of bring your own drinks, bring your own poems. It's going to be so cool. Sari pulls out a poster out of her bag and holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? Does this look like she's kidding, Natsuki? Does this look like the face of mercy to you? Don't tell me you started putting up these posters up. Or don't tell me you started putting those posters up already. Okay, I won't. Uh, well, I did. Do you really think that's bad? It's that bad of an idea? Well, you didn't even ask us before you started advertising. We never agreed to stand up in front of a bunch of random people and perform our poems. That wasn't part of the job description. I should sue you for false advertisement. I... I agree with Natsuki. And I agree with the fish thing. Okay, no. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... Yes, let's please calm down and take a moment to think about it. I understand that you two haven't had much experience sharing your poems out loud. In fact, we all haven't done that much. But I still think we should try our best. Look around. Jump around. Monica motions to all of us. We're all here because we have a passion for literature and this club. Don't you want to share that passion with other people? To inspire them to pursue their inner writer? Yeah! It's all about exploring yourself and trying new things, all while having fun! Monica and I nod our heads in agreement. Yuri, er, Natsuki and Yuri, on the other hand, remain silent. Guess that means it's my turn to say something. I mean, I don't think it's that much to ask. As Monica said, 
We're all here because we care about the club and want to see it flourish. And if that means... And if all that means is a two-minute poetry performance, then I think we can manage. Sayuri and Monica's faces light up as I finish speaking. Hey, it's not like I don't care about the club. Dummy. It's just... Do we really have to perform? It's like, yes, you have to get in costume and... Like, the old days of performing the Iliad. You know, we have to perform, because that's how poetry was back then. And no. Just no. You know how hard it is to get new members. It's because people are just narrow-minded jerks. They don't even give literature a chance. Who's to say this festival will be any different? I'm inclined to agree with Natsuki. I'm sorry, Monica. I know how much you want to do this, but I just can't imagine performing in front of a crowd of strangers. Well, at least Natsuki, Yuri and Natsuki have proven they can agree on something. Best friends. Monica sighs. Her eyes close as she rubs her temples. It's like, please, don't make me lose my temper and go ape shit on everyone. Look, guys, I know you're anxious. I understand that. I really do. To be honest with you, I'm a bit nervous myself. <laughs> After all, it's my club, so people are going to judge me the most if our performance doesn't go well. You'll be labeled as... I don't know what they would label you as. Natsuki, if it makes you feel any better, a few of my friends will be coming along. They're lovely people. They won't judge you for your tastes. They'll judge you in your taste of friends! Okay, no, I don't know. They better not be those kinds of mean girls that you find in every other high school. I've known them for years, trust me. Natsuki huffs, turning away. Huff! She doesn't look particularly convinced. Yeah, it's like, what are they gonna do, though? Know? I mean, even, even if they are, like, nice, lovely people, it's like... It's just, like, five out of twenty people. So, yeah, it's not really going to help much. And Yuri, I know it's a scary thought, but I've thought of a way to ease you into it. We're going to practice. Hmm? Why don't we start by practicing our poems to each other in the club? No, 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 no way! Monica! This is too sudden! Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? But, but... Monica, there's gotta be something else we can do. I don't know. Maybe we should all just wear masks and perform the Iliad. The whole Iliad. Okay, no, that would take a few days at least. Yuri nods vigorously at Natsuki's words, anxiety written all over her face. But guys... But Proto! No, Sayori. It's okay. Aw, oh, she's crying again. If you guys really think you can do better than a poetry performance, then I'll gladly go along with an alternative. But then people are gonna get mad at us for false advertising. Like, I'm mad at you for false advertising. So, any ideas? Like I said, let's perform the Iliad. Or, specifically, Homer's Odyssey. An awkward silence fills the room. And Natsuki... Er, when Natsuki's grumpy, Yuri's like, Ugh! Monica's like, I'm happy! And Sayori's crying, and I don't like seeing her crying. We all glance at each other anxiously before Sayori finally speaks up. Oh, we could... It's like, we could do a dance tribute to Angelina Jolie. Okay, no, that's that's even worse. Sorry stops and thinks to herself for a moment. Wait, no, never mind. That wouldn't work. Yeah, I told you, performing the Iliad would not work. We would need more time. Once again, the room falls silent. Well then, I guess we can't can or pff, I guess we can't come up with something different after all. <laughs> Hold on. This operation was your idea. 
It's like, it was her idea. <laughs> Monica laughs, attempting to ease the tension in the room. It's like, you knew no one would be able to come up with an alternative. So now we're, we have to do it. I know you guys might not be the most on board with the with this idea, but I think it's our best option. Please, guys, please? Can you stop pressuring us? I'm honestly surprised Natsuki's putting up such a resistance. I knew she was a little hot-headed, but even still. I'm not pressuring you, Natsuki. I almost sounded like a... like... a stereotypical teacher. I'm not pressuring you! Both of them ra have raised their voice. Yuri looks a little startled, and Sayuri looks anxious to intervene. She's crying again. Ah! Oh, guys! Please! There's no need to get angry! Can we just discuss this normally? Don't get mad, get glad! I'm just quoting old commercials. Monica reflects on Sayori's words, looking a little shamed of her outburst. Yeah, stop being all angry, even though you look adorable when you're angry. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to raise my voice. It's just, this festival is important to me, that's all. Ever since I created this club, I've always wanted to show other people. I've always wanted to show other people. I, I guess that makes sense. Natsuki, Yuri, I imagine you were both a little apprehensive when Daniel joined, right? After all, he was an unfamiliar face. She smiles warmly at me. Don't drag me into this. Is this one of those if I'm going down you're coming with me moments? But look! He's integrating really well. To the point that I think somebody's in love. She faces Natsuki. I mean, you two bonded over manga, right? He asked you for recommendations. And from what I could gather, you both share a common interest. Well, it's not like we bonded or anything. It was just nice to find someone else who likes manga, that's all. She shoots a look at Yuri. <laughs> of course, how silly of me to forget. Anyway, maybe some of those new members might also be manga enthusiasts. Who knows? Surely you'd like being able to share your passion with other people, right? Natsuki shrugs half-heartedly. And don't call me Shirley! I suppose that'd be cool, yeah. Monica beams. See, that's exactly my mentality. Wanting to share the things you like with new people. Yeah, yeah, I know that. It's just... Are there really no other ideas? Last chance. Either Homer's Odyssey or the dance tribute to Angelina Jolie. Remember, poetry performances are a pretty big part of this club. Well, it wasn't before I joined, apparently. You never even thought of sharing poetry until... MC brought it up. We want to show people what our meetings are really like. You mean with all the wacky shenanigans that we get into? If we just gave out posters, or showed them our poems in writing only, it wouldn't really be a fair reflection. Saying that there's no real way she's going to win this, Natsuki sits back and grumbles something under her breath. So what do you think, guys? For me? For us? Ugh, fine. I still don't think this is a good idea, but fine, I'll do it. Just stop guilt tripping. Just stop guilt tripping us. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. And you, Yuri? Yuri nervously glances at each of our expectant faces. But Monica, what if people start... Uh, being inconsiderate and disturb us or laugh. Well, then that's when I punch them. I'm not surprised Yuri is worried about this. Oh, don't worry. If anyone stops out of line, I'll put a swift stop to that. I'll delete them. And then no one will ever know that they were ever here. And no one will ever know that they were gone. She has a stern glint in her eye. And I have a rep and I have to repress a shiver. 
I'm glad she's with us. It's like, imagine if she was against us. Yuri looks somewhat relieved, but it's clear she's still worried. Oh, oops. But it's clear she's still worried. She swallows and nods. I suppose I don't really have a choice, do I? Nope. Your mission, and you have no choice but to accept it, is to do the poetry recital. I shake my head. Okay. I'll do it. Do it. Make the sacrifice. Yay! That's everyone! Wait, I didn't say anything yet. You're the best, Yuri! Why does Monica still look pissed? This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Why do I have the feeling you're going to be the death of me? Don't say things like that, Master. I know you'll do great, Yuri. Just trust me. But anyway, let's move back onto the main event. While we have the time, I want each of you to choose a poem of yours to practice reciting in front of each other. Yuri and Natsuki exchange uneasy glances, but don't say anything. Monica, come on. It's her... It's that time for her. You can't make her do that. Well, yeah, I know, but still. It's like... I don't know, it's like, did you already forget that Natsuki's having that special time again? Don't worry, I'll go first so everyone feels a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook, searching for a specific poem. Ah, here we are. It's called The Ugly Barnacle. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Once there was an ugly barnacle. He was so ugly that everyone died. The end. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. Her eyes move across the page and sing with her lips. Every word has the perfect amount of emotion put behind it, making the poem almost come to life. Her inflection is extraordinary. I'm impressed, and judging by a quick glance around me, so is everyone else. Sayuri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. You don't understand anything about her. Even Natsuki's once sour attitude is replaced by awe. And she's probably looking adorable again. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Yep! Sayori jumps up from the chair and takes Monica's place at the front of the room. This poem is called, um... Uh... Uh, how did you do it so easily, Monica? Well... Try to imagine you're alone, like you're reciting it to yourself. Just close your eyes. Oh, well... No, you can't do... You can't do that unless... You either have the poem perfectly memorized, or... You can read it through your eyelids. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. Hmm... Oh, I think I get it. Sayori nods to herself. Anyway, this poem's called My Meadow. Sayori begins reciting her poem. It seems as if her soft voice is a perfect match. As for the poem itself, it has a similar tone when compared to her other ones. Bittersweet. It's peaceful yet somber at the same time. Bittersweet, you could call it. Okay. Hearing the poem in Sayori's voice almost gives it an entirely new meaning. I think this is what Sayori means when she says she likes my poems. It's like seeing a whole new side of someone you thought you knew completely. Sayori finishes and we all applaud. I did it! Vamanos! Yep! Good job! Sayori beams as she walks back to her seat. So, who'd like to go next? Not me. Natsuki, Yuri, and I all look at each other nervously. 
Okay, kids, up against the wall. It's time for public humiliation. I open my mouth, but Yuri beats me to the punch. Uh, I'll go! Nice! Thanks for showing initiative, Yuri! Y yes Yuri rushes over to the podium, clutching a sheet of paper in her hands. This poem is called... Yuri freezes as she looks up at us. You can do it, Yuri! It's called... After image of a crimson eye. Of a crimson eye. Yep, sorry. Yuri begins to recite her poem. Her voice is shaky at first, but the more she reads, the more confident she becomes. It's similar to what happens when she gets absorbed in her books. The shy and apprehensive Yuri I'm used to is replaced by a fierce and confident woman. A dangerous woman. How many times have I, have I referenced Ariana Grande in this? The poem itself is like a maze in its structure, with twists and turns every line. But Yuri is unfazed and enunciates each word with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... Monica's the first to start applauding. Sheepishly, I follow along, and soon the club room is filled with the sound of applause. Yuri ducks her head in embarrassment, a shy smile creeping over her face. Yuri, that was really good. Like I said, you don't have anything to worry about. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thanks. Guess Yuri's done for the day. So, who'd like to go next? Natsuki? Hmph. <laughs> Why do I go before Daniel? It's not like I can compare to you guys, anyway. Might as well let Daniel lower everyone's standards before I go. Jeez, thanks. Natsuki! It's like so grumpy. Monica hastens to chastise her, shooting me a sympathetic look. Like, I'm sorry Natsuki's being a very sun son against you. That was kind of rude, don't you think? You should apologize to Daniel. Natsuki's face turns red as all the girls turn to look at her. Stop looking at me! I decide to spare Natsuki from embarrassment. Hey, it's really no big deal. I'm used to being called a loser all my life. I'll end up going at some point anyway. Might as well do it now. Thing is, I don't have much of a selection to choose from. I'll just... Go with what I wrote for today. All 20 words. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I take a deep breath. In my head, I repeat myself the advice Monica gave to Sayori. Try to imagine you're alone, like you're reciting it to yourself. Alone. 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 My house is the first thing that comes to mind when I think of being alone. The scene rapidly develops in my head, like I'm recalling a recent memory. I'm sitting alone at my desk. The dim light hanging from the ceiling gives a warmth to the room. In front of me is the poem I just finished, the ink from my pen still fresh on the page. I pick up the notebook and begin reciting it aloud. While I'm not the most confident in it, I still try and put energy into it. I can almost hear my voice echoing off my bedroom walls. I'm in my own little world now. As I finish, the sound of applause pulls me out of my daydream. I'm back in the club room, standing at the podium while the girls politely applaud my performance. It's pity applause, isn't it? That was good, Daniel. I... I guess. Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. I don't think it's your writing abilities, but rather your lack of confidence that weighs you down. And my low self-confidence. That's something that'll improve over time, though, so don't worry. Or... Who knows, maybe this MC is different. I'm probably... Actually, yes, I'm thinking of the MC from the Purist mod. 
he had little self-confidence in himself. And the way I see it, every single one of these characters is different. Like how I absolutely cannot stand Yuri in the Exit Music Club mod. I hate Yuri in that mod. Well, you can't go play it now, but if you watch Razbowski play it, you'll see what I mean. Or Bishu Mike, or Ronald McOne Punch. At least I think Bijou Mike actually completed it. Oh well. Point being, look up the mod, watch someone play it, and then you'll see why I do not like Yuri in that mod. Compared to here, where she's actually comparatively nice, and shy, and reserved, and loving, kind of. Anyways, let's see. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. As she says this, Natsuki begrudgingly lets, er, gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Stop looking at me! Okay, well... Somebody finally said it. But you're presenting. Yep, so Mina, meet the Kare. Everyone, all eyes on me. Huh. <laughs> you don't have to stare right into my soul, though. Oh, come on, it's not like Monica is Esper. Or... Actually... Anyone unlucky enough to come across her will hear her spine-chilling question. Am I pretty? Oh my god, this is... Okay, I'm... I'm... This... I'm legit freaked out by this. Okay, well... <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna... It's like, oh, well... If anything, I'm actually just gonna walk away from the computer for a bit. Because it's legit freaking me out. This version of Monica just freaks me out. Stepping back to the computer for a bit. I mean, yes, just look at her. Like, what do you call this? <laughs> it's like, I don't even know what to describe this as. <laughs> and you can just hear my... It's like, that's me actually being legit kind of freaked out by this. It's like, this is an acting. I haven't been this freaked out about anything since the original DDLC. It's like she's literally just staring into my soul. No, Monica did stare into my soul that one time and totally freaked me the fuck out. Okay, well... Okay, Natsuki, I can kind of see what you're getting at. She takes a moment to compose herself. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Oh, Jump. Wait, is that one of the ones... Oh, well, whatever. Natsuki takes a breath. While her voice is unenthusiastic, the poem has a surprising amount of energy to it. The rhymes tie to each other seamlessly, creating a flow that moves the poem along at a brisk pace. The words seem to bounce up and down with the rhythm, seemingly making the poem come to life. It's Natsuki's signature style, and it works exceptionally well when read out loud. She quickly finishes and huffs as she makes her way back to her seat while we applaud her. That wasn't so bad, was it? She stares at her poem blankly for a second before replying. Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Well... We're gonna be doing it again. Um, well... That's what we're gonna be doing at the festival, so... Do you at least feel confident enough to do it in front of a crowd? Eh, I guess. Not like there's any other choice. And I guess it'll be easier doing it in front of other people. I can just put on whatever face I want with strangers. I don't care about what they think of me. Exactly, because it's like... You're never going to have to really deal with them again, or talk to them again. So it's like, who cares what they think? Or at least so I think, anyways. 
But when it's just my friends, aka people that you want to see every other day and interact with constantly, yes, that's a different story. It's just embarrassing. But I still hate the idea that we have to perform. She still she mutters that that last sentence under her breath. The others probably didn't even hear it. I knew Nazuki was stubborn, but this is a whole other level. However, it does look like she's going along with the idea of performing for the festival. Well, at least for now, she's basically outvoted and can't come up with another idea anyway. Really? That's a surprise. For me, it's the other way around. Having all those people looking at you, judging you. Yeah, I can kind of understand that logic. Ugh, I don't like to think about it. I... I can relate to that. Yuri murmurs quietly. The thought of so many eyes observing you, observing your every move all at once. She trails off, shaking her head. Well, that's just how it is, so... Natsuki sighs in frustration. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have to worry much about for the festival, or you won't have much to worry about for the festival. Speaking of which, I want to thank all of you for performing. It might be difficult, but now that we have a general idea of what it'll be like, we'll be able to prepare ourselves. Make sure you pick out a poem and show it to me by tomorrow, okay? I'll need to know so I can make the pamphlets over the weekend. Hmm... I should probably find a different poem to recite. Not my mindless drivel. I know you'd prefer it if we used our own poetry, but I'm probably going to pick a poem from a poet I like or something. Not my mindless drivel. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, Daniel. I'm already pleasantly surprised you're putting all this effort into the club. Low expectations, huh? <laughs> More like any effort you put in makes me happy in general. Stop seducing me. Monica smiles at me, and then turns to smile at everyone else. That goes for everyone here. Thanks for going along with these last-minute plans. These were last-minute plans? Anyway, I think that about does it for today. Let's still try and write poems for tomorrow, okay? I know the, f er, I know the festival's coming up, but it's been working out nicely the past few days, and I like to con I'd like it to continue. Tomorrow, we'll finalize who's doing what for the festival, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Oh boy, the infamous weekend. Please don't tell me I'm going to be scarred for life for this. This is supposed to be a happy ending. Remember, we have till Monday. Well, at least I would have thought that there should be some happy endings here. It'll be so much fun. I can't wait. We all stand up, packing our things. However, Monica's voice stops us. Oh, and guys? She pauses, twirling a strand of her hair in her hand. This club truly means so much to me. And I really appreciate that you're willing what you're willing to do for it. You guys are the best. Thanks, Professor Sonia. In typical fashion, Natsuki just rolled her, rolls her eyes. Yuri smiles timidly, while Natsuki wears a hearty smile. Ugh, let's just get this over with. I hope we don't regret this. That's okay, Monica. Nothing to thank us for. We really appreciate what you've made for us. I can't help but catch Yuri muttering under her breath after she says this. I can do this. I can do this. I thought she was going to be cursing out Monica, but no. This Yuri isn't like that. Yeah, I love it here. We'll get to spread this cozy little place to other people. Yeah, it's all good, Monica. Alright, I stand up and grab my bag. Well... I'm certainly not as enthusiastic as Monica or Sayori about the festival. If I can pull that little daydream stunt again, I think I'll be alright. It's for the sake of the club. Not to mention, impressing the girls. Okay, no. <laughs> well, it's like that was his ulterior motive all along. Once I'm fully packed up, I walk over to Sayori. Ready to go? 
Yep. Ready to go, madam? Jeez, don't you ever get tired of walking home with Daniel, Sayori? Why? What's wrong with me? Is it my face? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, don't mind her. You guys are more adorable than anything. Which is why I ship NC and Sayori like hardcore. I ship that crap like FedEx. <laughs> alright, alright. No need to make such a big deal about, about it. Because we're not going to be doing that for at least another probably 20 videos or so. I don't know. It must be a little nice, though. Um, yeah, I guess. Ah, jeez. Let's just go already, Sayori. Okay. The two of us begin the walk home. The walk of shame. A lot has changed in the past few days. Lost in thought, I don't even notice how quiet Sayori's being until we're almost back home. There's a lot going on in the club now, eh? I bet you're thinking about all your new vice president duties that you'll have to deal with when the club grows bigger. Uh, uh, yeah. Anything specific on your mind? Hmm, not really. Sorry, did you want to talk? I mean, you don't have to if you're thinking about stuff. No, no, it's nice talking to you. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. It's nice that we, uh... Damn, it's like... I didn't even think about it, but... Oh my... I do not want to break her heart again. I really don't. <laughs> uh... Damn it. Never mind, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh. You're sounding a little like Yuri right now. <laughs> huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I guess I just have a question for you, Daniel. What's up? Sorry, clears her throat before speaking. Okay, I guess we're gonna have a question here. So let's just say that one day. Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? I'd run like hell. What kind of question is that? <laughs> like that'll ever happen. You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... Okay. So... Just taking my notes again. So, I'm going to choose Walk with Natsuki. At least that's the one that makes the most logic to me. Walking home with Natsuki, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart go doki doki? I mean... I think I would be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she so cute and fun to be around? She's so cute and grumpy. And I love it. I... I guess so, yeah. Haha, <laughs> you admit it! You like Natsuki, you like Natsuki! But that still has nothing to do with what I said! Besides, what's the point of speculating about something that's never gonna happen? Yeah, it's like the Shrek opening says. <laughs> like that'll ever happen. I don't know. I guess I just like to think about how different things could be. Why though? Even if I did walk with her, it's not like you'd be replaced or anything. We'd still be friends, right? Unless you get a boyfriend. But if you get a boyfriend, he better treat you right. Because if he doesn't, I'm gonna punch him in the face! Okay, well. <laughs> it's like MC for best friend, or I don't know. I... Sari looks distant. I guess. The conversation trails off, and I'm not feeling awkward. Why would she ask a question like that? Because she is afraid of being replaced. I don't know. Does walking home with me really mean that much to her? Yes. Yes, it does. If it does, then I guess I shouldn't take it away from her. 
Sire and I part ways without saying another word. I reach my house and open the door. I'm home! What's this music? I can't tell if it's a little ominous or... It sounds sad, too, to me. Ominous and sad. No response. Well, you said your mom was traveling the world in the seven seas because everybody's looking for something. I'm alone as usual. Alone again, naturally. I mumble that part to myself. Talking to myself as though I'm the protagonist of a manga or game. I might be going store crazy. <laughs> Imagine that. Mom is still out on her business trip. She's never home anymore. I miss her. But I don't blame her for anything. It's hard enough providing for yourself, let alone a kid. Still, I'm alone. I decide... Er, since I'm alone, I decide to make an instant meal for dinner. Digging through my cabinets, I find some old soup cups. Hmm, miso soup sounds good. I unwrap the packaging, pour in some water, and place the meal in the microwave. While it cooks, my mind wanders back to my performance earlier. That daydream was so vivid, so realistic. Can I really pull off that performance again, but this time in front of a crowd? You must use the force, Luke. I mean, Daniel. It wasn't even the greatest in the first place. Just doing it in front of the girls was nerve-wracking. I guess I'm not really used to being around people again. Maybe that's it. Thinking about it, I've been kind of subconsciously isolating myself from people ever since the divorce. Before it, even, in some cases. I wonder when I start shutting myself. Maybe that's part of why Sayori and I drifted apart over the past few years. It wasn't intentional or anything, it just happened. At least, I don't think it was intentional. Depression and all that can really do that to you. But I'm glad I got to reconnect with her in the literature club. It's giving me something to do, something to look forward to that isn't anime or video games. Talking with the girls has made me feel more appreciated. It's a nice feeling, something that's been missing for me ever since the divorce. Maybe that's why Sari likes walking home with me. It makes her feel appreciated. I'm sure it does. Sayori. The more I think about it, the more concerned for her I get. Uh, and the more I feel like a jerk for... Like, well, like I said, I kind of have an order for this. But, well, like I said, I'm going to make it up to her. But damn it, I'm going to feel like a jerk if I have to break her heart again, like... In the original game. She said some pretty weird stuff. But I guess people just have their off days. Maybe she's just changed a little over the years. Pretty normal, right? I like to be able to tell if something was up with her. Although given our recent distance, I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. Sure, we've started talking again. But there's a lot of lost time. Maybe that'll change, and maybe we'll go back to how we used to. Beep. I hope. Okay, here we go. Let's hope I don't mess this one up again.
Okay, well, I'm going to try that again because... At this point, it felt like it was probably going to be like a 50-50 between Sayori and Natsuki. Okay, well, let's hope I do this better. I'm gonna hope that it worked. Okay, well, I think that'll do it for this video, so thank you all for watching, and I shall see you guys next time with whatever else I do. Stay golden, and later, folks.